So there is hope for the backslider. There is hope. There is mercy available. Uh, you can return to the Lord. It's not uh, you've crossed some kind of line and you think that there's no way to return. I've sinned too much. Uh, even in my own case, uh, I had departed from the Lord. I went back to my old ways. I became even worse than I was before I had met the Lord the first time. Uh, and this life really begins to become like a, like a cancer. It becomes to eat at you and you become uh, very callous. And uh, once sin takes place in your life again, uh, you are alienated from the Lord because uh, God cannot have no part with a person who is living in sin. Sin separates us from the Lord. Uh, so we see backsliding is absolutely possible uh, according to the Bible. And here in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, we're going to be going to a lot of scriptures here. So I uh, just want to present the biblical view of what backsliding is. The word it appears first in the Old Testament and we'll go later into the New Testament and see also, even though the, the, the term backslider is not used in the New Testament, it, the actions are very clear. Uh, the Lord describing them himself. Uh, the book of James also describing what it means to go back. And, uh, but here in Jeremiah, chapter 3, verses 21 and 22 says, A voice was heard on the desolate heights, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Now notice here, perverted their way means that it's what they have done. Now whether or not God wasn't able to keep them. We hear a lot about this day, uh, especially when people are teaching uh, internal security that well, when God saves you, God keeps you. God does all the, all the saving and all the keeping and you can't ever fall of his hand, you can't ever be plucked and all of this. Well, according to here, to this verse, uh, the children of Israel perverted their own way and they have forgotten the Lord their God. So it's possible for you to pervert your own way. It's possible for you to forget the Lord who bought you with His blood. It's not whether or not you save yourself through works. It's the fact that you continue to meditate upon God. You, you, you walk with an attitude of gratefulness and thankfulness in your heart for what God has done for you. And this is every day. Verse 22, Return you backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Indeed we do come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Uh, Always the answer, always the end is returning to the Lord. There, uh, Peter told the Lord, when the Lord said to the disciples in John chapter 6, who departed from him, do you want to leave also? And Peter said, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Uh, this is absolutely the truth. There is no other place to turn but the Lord. But it's up to us to turn to the Lord. You know, there is there. there's no other remedy but to return and to repent. Uh, but there is mercy available. I also like to go to verse chapter 8 and verse 5, which says, Why has this people slidden back, Jerusalem, and in a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit, they refuse to return. So we see here that, again, the word backsliding means that they were once in a position to where they were obeying God. They were once in a position where they had God's favor. They were honoring Him. And they allowed themselves to become corrupt. They allowed the outside influences of the world to influence them to a place that they started to revert back to their old ways. They started to mimic the, the ways of the world. As Asap said, he considered the ways of the wicked and how they were so prosperous and how they are so strong and how they, on the outside, seemingly like they have the life to live. So why am I serving the Lord so strongly and suffering the way that I am? And Christian, if that describes you, if you're living strong for the Lord and you're on fire for Him and, and uh, you're allowing these thoughts to penetrate your way of thinking to the point that you're actually considering that the world has it better than you, you have to consider the ways of the world and where they're heading. Uh, the Bible says that the world is passing away and all its lust, but he that does the will of God abides forever. If you're suffering and you're doing the will of God, in, in the end there's laid up for you treasure in heaven. There's an eternity that will not pass away, that will never fade away. 
And the ways of the world are to keep your mind on the temporal things, but the Christian needs to be with his mind on the things above, the things which are not seen. So, yes, backsliding is possible. And it is possible to consider your old lifestyle even. It may not necessarily have to be uh, just the ways of the wicked or the people around you that influence your thought life, that you start to ponder, oh, well, is being a Christian really worth it? Is it really uh, such a worthwhile thing to serve the Lord and to be a Christian when everybody else is is prospering and everyone else has a great but see there's things that you don't see about the world you see the devil will always try to tempt you with don't you remember how good it was and don't you remember all the great feelings and the passing pleasures of sin but you'll never be reminded you'll never be tempted with how lonely you were how depressed you were you'll never be tempted of the times that people backstabbed you how many times uh, you, you suffered in the streets or the, the misery that sin brings. He said, the devil never tempts you to do that because if you think about that, then you won't consider going back. And you have to realize that the devil, Satan, is the god of this world, the Bible says, and that he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If it was impossible for the enemy to devour you, then why would he make it the attempt to devour you in the first place? The, the reality is that he can devour you, but the Bible says to resist him firm in the faith. See, that's, again, the answer is to remain firm in the faith, being steadfast, being like a rock, an immovable rock that is solid, clinging to the cross, and to consider, to submit your, your thoughts. So with that, what I would like to do is go to the New Testament now and see what the New Testament has to say. We're going we're gonna to go to a parable that everyone knows, well, mostly everyone should know, uh, Luke chapter 8, which is the parable of the sower. The Lord gives a, a parable, and then he also gives the description and uh, the meaning behind the parable. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the meaning, what the Lord gives here uh, in verse 11. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, the seed that was being sown. Some fell into the rocks, some fell on good soil, but what does it mean? Does this mean that people can believe for a while? It says, those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the first seed that was sown uh, went by the wayside, never grew, never took root, uh, never got saved. Uh, this person, this type of person, never came to salvation to begin with. So, the whole, they were never saved to begin with, if they ever sinned in their life. Uh, this only happened one time, and it's in the parable that they never got saved. But there's more. There are other examples that the Lord gives here. Now, the second says, But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now, here are the, the seeds that fell on the rock. They had a root. They believed. The Bible says that they believed. The Lord Jesus says that they believed. They brought forth uh, a true repentance, a true faith, uh, but when the time of temptation came, they fell away. Now, what is exactly temptation? I believe that the book of James gives the best description of how temptation comes. And if we go to James chapter 1, we're going to see exactly what temptation is. Verse 14 says, I'm sorry, we'll start at verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So, a temptation for someone may be different than for somebody else. Somebody who maybe once lived a life of, of drugs and, and sexual sin uh, is going to be tempted in a certain way than, let's say, by somebody who, was, who lived a life of, of, of gambling or greed. Uh, it's all different for someone else. It says here, when you're drawn away and enticed by your own desires. You see, the devil knows the things that you used to lust after. He's going to tempt you with things of your old lifestyle that, 
that your old sins that you clung to before you came to the cross, before you